Welcome back to the show, mate. How are you? Good, thanks, Martin. How are you, mate? I'm very well. Okay, so you've been in Wellington um, and uh, I, I presume doing something at NZHQ. Uh, You're on your way back to Christchurch. Dude, you know what kind of questions you, I'm coming at you with. You know what I've got to ask. <laughs> and I know that there's not much you can actually say, um, but also you're a good man because you come on. What can you tell us about what's going on and what do you know? Well, basically what we're doing is we're, we're assuming he's with us, uh, right? So we're, we're planning on that. The, the, the guy raises, he's got this razor-like focus on the, on the program at the moment, the pre-season. He's fully immersed. He's talking lovingly about the coaches and the players and um, and um, you wouldn't think there's anything else on his mind other than than Crusaders 2023 that's what you that's what you would think now obviously outside of the environment it doesn't quite look and feel like that but I, I can I can assure you inside the place he's just uh, absolutely focused on 2023 so um, yeah so we, we what we're doing is we're just we're going to play it when it arrives. We've been through a couple of changes before. Obviously, we, we um, Jason mm, uh, and mm. Andrew Goodman went to Leinster, so we sort of we're reasonably well practiced at dealing with these things. <laughs> but um, but yeah, we're, we're um, at the moment. You would hardly think when you see the guy at work, you'd hardly think that there was anything on his mind other than uh, Crusaders twenty twenty three. Can we just, is it a fluid situation or do you feel more confident than that? Uh, I think you just play what's in front of you, don't you? So uh, it's essentially what's in our control, Marty, is, is, uh, um, is just dealing with each day as it comes. So, and that's the only thing we've got control. Everything else is sort of outside of the control. Um, we've been through, um, you know, we've been through how do we deal with these things before, um, because we, you know, we did it obviously last year. It's pretty public knowledge that um, we had to deal with those things that, as did other super clubs. So we've, we've been, been through the process before we thought about it. Um, but now it's sort of, you know, those plans sit in the bottom drawer and we just dust off, um, uh, dust them off if, if something happens. In the meantime, we just assume 2023 is, um, is all go. This is Colin Mansford with us, the CEO of the Crusaders, and you'd, you'd confirmed previously that uh, he's gone by 2024 anyway, isn't it, that you've kind of accepted that? Yeah, and, and uh, yes and no. <laughs> uh, we've accepted it, um, but, you, you know, if, if nothing else happened and he turned around and said, could I stay, and I've been talking to his wife, Jane, a few times trying to convince them to, uh, for that to be the case... We, we, we would absolutely, um, you, you know, I'd try and talk the guy into staying, but but I think the reality is, his contract to, uh, expires end of twenty four, and he does have a he can leave after the World Cup in twenty three. You know, it's does it, how can paint it, paint in an, an analogy for us? Is this like you know, you have one of your kids leaving home, or is it just like you've got <laughs> you, you've got one of your star players who you know is obviously you know, say you've. You know, they're playing for a small club somewhere. You know that they're going to go to a bigger thing or just on to bigger honours. It's just the way of it. And, I mean, I know that the last thing you're going to ever do is hold him back. Of course, you'd love him to stay. People, we're talking about, obviously, Scott Robertson here. I mean, it's, you know, we're not doing a smoke screen or anything silly like that. I mean, obviously, you'd love him to stay. But at the same time, I get kind of from the tone of your voice that you're very proud. And if he goes to, a, a, you know, an international job, which is what his ambition and what his dream is, you're, going to, you're also going to applaud that, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. If you, you you think, I mean, the classic for me is Jason when he went to the All Blacks job. Um, we were uh, absolutely stoked for the guy. It's sort of you know so proud of him, um, so pleased for him. And, and the same thing would be the case here. But I, I think the nature of Super Rugby is it's a, it's actually a, it's a development competition in some respects. It's more than that. It's it's a great competition in its own right. But out of that competition, players get selected for the All Blacks and. Coaches go on to bigger and better things. So at your core, you've got to believe that you're a development organisation first. And, um, and and I think, you know, that's how we feel about the place. So, yeah, we'd be, you know, whatever happens to him, um, if he wants to do it, uh, he'd go with our blessing. The other thing is, Colin, is that, you know, when you when you talk like that, I mean, I was just, I was writing some names down. I was writing down Wayne. I was writing down Robbie and... Um, you know, that's, it's not just a breeding ground for great players that have gone on to great things. It's actually, you know, your organisation going right back to when this competition started is a breeding ground for damn good coaches, mate. 
I, I think that's the thing. I, I, I've just spent a week up in Japan um, uh, just uh, talking to some of our partners up there. And, um, and, and by virtue of that trip, you end up um, coming across uh, Robbie Deans, uh, Todd Blackadder, um, Rob Penny. Yes. Um, and and you, you start looking. At, and I think actually there's more Crusaders IP in Japan than there is um, uh, probably in New Zealand at the moment. And I think that's the thing. It's... Um, it does make you proud when you when you get the chance to work for an organisation that does this to the place or does this to rugby. It's um, yeah, it's it's pretty um, humbling. So, but but that's that's the nature of it, you know. Um, I, I think when Jason got that gig, I, I was just so stoked for the guy. It's sort of, um, I did actually ask him if I was allowed to keep holding the iPad when he's doing scrum sessions with the All Blacks, and he told me I'm not allowed to. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's mm. awesome. I mean, it's just you know, I mean, I, I got a text from um, him yesterday, Scott, uh, and I, and it was I wasn't going to say anything about. It. I mean, I'm not going to say what it was. I was just giving him a hard time about, dude. You know, you're in the news a lot, considering you're not saying very much. And he sent back a, a nice cheeky message and that. And so, look, he's just there. Just seems to be an overwhelming feeling of of real goodwill towards Scott Robertson. Um, I don't know about you, mate. I just wish and I just hope that by next year. You know, however this is decided, it's done with some grace. It's done with some just thinking about the feelings of everyone that's involved here. And I suppose what I'm trying to get at is that we've got a guy in place at the moment who is the All Black coach, and he's got that job until the end of the World Cup. And I, I just like yes. to I just like to see a bit more respect around that because he's a bloody good guy, is Ian Foster. Whether you, people want him as the coach or not is another conversation entirely. Do you know where I'm going with this? Just that's the fact of just you know show a little bit you know show a little bit of actually humanity here. Well, I think the thing is he's been appointed to coach the All Blacks until the end of the uh, until I think it's contracts end of 23, isn't it? Till after the World Cup. Yeah. Um, and he's um, a, a, and they've pulled together a team. That's uh, had a pretty good run at it at the back end of last year, and um, and I think you're right. I, you know, from my interactions with Fozzy, I don't think you'd find um, a, a better person. You know, he's a he's a bloody good human, and um, and all these guys. I think that's the thing we'll forget. All of them are pretty exceptional coaches, and they all have amazing um, capability. So yeah, it, it sort of it must be pretty hard sometimes when you're doing their job. I sort of. You know, it's hard to go to the supermarket sometimes, uh, <laughs> yes. whereas the rest of us, it's a little bit easier. Yeah. How is this? Um, how's this new competition, the nine years signed with Australia? How does that affect you and your forward planning over the next couple of years? Oh, it makes a lot of difference. So we've, I think, all the clubs uh, have had a really tough year in in twenty two, obviously with a slightly abridged competition um, and no crowds for a period. I think the other thing that's happened is that the uncertainty actually made it difficult with, you know, some of our longer-term partners because they're starting to think, that, you know, they plan a lot longer than one year out. So so for us, um, the certainty of the competition, and I think the commitment to make the thing work um, is probably even more exciting. You know, we've got Moana Pacifica in there. We've got yep, Fiji yep. and Drua in there. Yep. Um, but, but they were, it was almost like um, that they were sort of, a, it, it felt like there's a bit of a tack on. Now we've got a commitment to that format of competition for, uh, essentially a decade almost, you go, right, we can make this thing hum. And and I'm, well, that's what I'm really excited about. And I think actually sponsors and partners are, are telling us the same story. So, yeah, good yeah, call. So very stoked about that. Yeah, mm. Colin Mansford is with us here, CEO of the Crusaders. Yeah, good call because, you know, it, for, it went through that, that patch where there was just wasn't broken and it kept getting fixed from Super 12 and then 14 and then 15 and then it was 18 and we had pools and all, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, and, and it just got so unwieldy it seemed so look we've got what we've got we've got these teams we've got it locked in for 10 years we know exactly what we're going to get um the other thing is of course have they turned any sod on the stadium yet they have uh, brilliant. they started brilliant. They, they, they're digging some stuff up they, they're telling us still quarter uh quarter two 2026 but um there's fences around there is definitely um there's holes in the ground um and uh, yeah, so uh, I go down there every day and have my morning cup of coffee. Go and on, keep an eye on. But yeah, yeah. So it's it's pretty exciting, very exciting. Well, look, you know, as I say, look, you know, I'm not asking you, pressing you for you know details and news because, as you say, I mean, you know, it'll happen when it happens, and we'll find out when when we find out. But um, yeah, look, if you're writing a note, just you know, save from. Just add it the rest of it. You know, for the rest of the rugby fans in New Zealand, if we can keep you in New Zealand, Scott Robertson would be damn good. I'd rather have you here doing what, <laughs> you know, just say that. All of us feel like that, don't? Mate, we do. 
Yeah, I think we, we do. There's no doubt about that, yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Have a, a really um, uh, rest of festive season, my friend, and we'll catch up next year, eh? Thanks, Marty. Same to you, mate. Cheers. Good on you. Bye-bye. Colin Mansbridge is with the CEO of the Crusaders.